I'm pleased to have uh, Ken Kuznia with us this morning. And uh, Ken is the founder and owner of Point Blank and has a passion for helping companies streamline their hiring process and ensure leaders are hiring the right person the first time. Years ago, he earned the moniker Career Catalyst because of his energy and love of doing whatever he can to guide people to their respective version of success, both professionally and personally. So Ken, thank you for joining us this morning, and I'm excited to have you on. Ken also served uh, on the Board of Directors for Job Seekers Network. He was one of our very first speakers and has spoken every year uh, in the last 11 years. So welcome back, Ken. Thanks, Craig, I appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Um, you know, Craig referenced what I do, I'm a recruiter, and, and I have also uh, spoken at job clubs, and particularly at JSN. And I've been walking people through the job search process for 20 years. Uh, but today, you know, rather than interview or resume tips and tricks, we're gonna discuss something that, in, in my opinion, plays a much bigger part in your job search. You, <laughs> your foundation, your orientation. I mean, what's going on internally? You know, back in 2004, I sat out counseling for the first time in my life. Trust me, it was, it was overdue. Uh, but I was looking for some outside perspective. I, I learned a ton and I've pretty much been getting monthly coaching um, ever since, but of the, of the uh, many insights I gleaned that year, one of the most prominent and long lasting was, if you find yourself in the dark, turn on the light. You, me, I mean, we all know that when we're, you know, when we're worn out and we're ca carrying heavy burdens or exhausted with frayed edges, you know, it's difficult to think clearly, uh, to, to see clearly. And in the dark, we just, we don't make our best decisions. It's, it's like not sleeping for a couple of days. Our capacities are limited. We become disoriented. And I don't need to tell you guys. I mean, finding a job, I mean, it invites its own struggles. You add in the isolation and the stress of the pandemic, along with the emotional toll of the accompanying uh, political divisiveness, you know, the anger, the hate, all that, all that stuff out there. And one can find themselves paralyzed. I mean, just deep in the darkness. And that's not even considering normal life or family emergencies, and financial fears, self-doubt, et cetera. You need to give yourself a break. I mean, pause, breathe, care for your humanity. I mean, in the midst of all the darkness, you need to turn on the light. And in this soul care that I'm referencing that we're gonna talk about, I mean, st stepping into the light is imperative. Why? Well, quite simply, we can't see in the dark. <laughs> um, we lose our orientation um, in the biggie. We're susceptible to attack. The internal saboteurs, you know, the voices within, spiritual attack, negativity, etc. You know, like any challenging endeavor, your job search is going to require the very best version of you. Physically, mentally, spiritually, you need to be fit. You need to be completely as present as possible. It's a challenge. It's like an adventure challenge or a marathon. I mean, and to, just to, to get a job, to get one of the good jobs, the one you actually want, I mean, it's literally, it's going to take all you got. You can't afford to get sucked into the mire, get to be sucked into the darkness. Ken, how... How can you tell if you've been sucked into the dark darkness? Ah, it's a good question, Craig. You know, it's um, the real, uh, you know, the surface ones that we're familiar with um, were easily agitated, more so <laughs> than normal. A shorter fuse. Uh, uh, we shut down and withdraw, maybe isolate. Uh, hopelessness, who hopelessness sets in like, what's the point? Uh, these are all you know, lit or, you know, things that are, you know, lights that point that we're in the darkness, more defensive than usual, increased gossiping. You know, we project out when we're in a dark spot. Judgment, whoo, that is my biggie. That is my biggie. Um, judgment of ourselves, which is a big part of our judgment, but unfortunately, judgment of ourselves projects directly 
uh, or leads directly to judging others. Um, I can't believe that family member said this. I can't believe that friend posted that. And we just start to get sucked into that. Resentment and anger are, are pretty big ones as well, Craig. They become really prominent. Yeah. So once you kind of are aware that you're kind of being sucked down in the darkness, what, what do you do then? Um, well, <laughs> if you're like me, unfortunately, you know, the, the default for a lot of us is, is to work harder. You know, we, we, we become aware that, you know, we're in this spot like, okay, now I got to try harder. I got to strive. And, you know, we start actually wrestling with the darkness, which unfortunately just adds to it. I mean, we get mad at it. So now we get mad at the dark. So now we're, you know, we're going to get in the ring with it and it's going to unfortunately just kick our butt. You know, a lot of blaming surfaces and you know, we start wrestling with it and trying to control it. You know, we start blaming companies for not getting back to us or what happened two years ago at a previous company. Uh, we blame the economy. If we have a strong political opinion, whoo, ripe apple, not even have to reach for it. It's right there is blaming the other political party. If it weren't for them and they're the way they do things, my life would be okay. It's just, we just go down these blaming roads. Uh, and then, it, you know, we default to attempting to control people in situations and just, whether it's family members or this financial situation, we try to control it. And when we try to control it, everything gets really, really rigid. Um, and all these things is, you know, anyone who thinks about them for a moment, you know, these things, we, we know they just only add fuel to the fire. Once we go down that path, it, it's now darker and we're even more depleted. So, you know, over the years, trust me, this is not the default. And have to be, you know, really conscious and intentional about it. But what I've what I've learned over the years is to not take the bait. I mean, the bait is there to go down that path, um, and to rather to just to pause, to breathe, um, and simply turn on the light. What do you What do you mean by turning on the light, Ken? Well, when you turn on the light. You know, there, there, there's some things that we get. Uh, what happens when we turn on the lights is it brings perspective. Um, it brings clarity. These are things that are not accessible to us in the darkness. You know, the light brings breathing room. You know, we're really tense um, in the dark, but in the light, ah, there comes breathing room. We have more energy in the light. Truth, oh, the truth resides in the light. And the truth is imperative, that truth about who we are and who we're not, that voice is not true, or the truth about that situation, um, what it's not, that story we've been creating around the situation. Oh, a biggie, we get access to creativity. Create, creativity resides in the light, which gives us access to different approaches, new avenues to pursue, how to go about the job search. It gets us present. We sleep better, we make better decisions. These are things that happen in the light. Okay. What are a few examples of things that draw people into the darkness? Yeah, to get drawn into the darkness on speculation and worry are a couple of the biggies, particularly in the current season. You know, watching the news, it, it is a flat out trap. I mean, I get it. We, we, with COVID and everything, we, we, we all want to know what's going on. But as marketing guru Seth Godin says, and he's been preaching this for a long time, this is a direct quote, cable news is optimized. In other words, this is how it wins. Cable news is optimized to breed fear, anger, and divisiveness. It's literally built for darkness. Um, if you know someone, and, or if it's yourself, that watches cable news a lot, you get really angry, you get sucked in, and you start getting mad at the other side, and what those are doing, that's, that's, that's how it wins. That's how the viewers get up, that's how they get ratings. So be very, very careful there. Social media, you know, at minimum, it's distractive and addictive, it's just at minimum. So you got a job search, you got a job, and you've got all these other things going on. I mean, we all know that you go, you start to just scroll a little bit, and you, 30 minutes later, like, what the what? And pretty soon we just lose our momentum over here. That's at minimum. Worse yet, numerous studies. I mean, just Google, uh, 
negative effects of social media. <laughs> and you're gonna get a gazillion studies that have been done over the last 10 years already that have proven that extended social media scrolling increases depression, anxiety, fears. I mean, these are, these are hallmarks of darkness. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the list beyond this gets pretty obvious. I mean, we all have bad habits. Certainly, if we had a couple hours this morning, I could list off mine. But, you know, we all have bad habits that are not, res that are not helping our respective cause. You know, in this case, job search. But whatever our respective cause is, we have habits, habits that hold us back. Um, and this, <laughs> guys, if you're like me, this is not something you have to journal about. It's not something you got to pray about. Lord, help me see what these, no, uh-uh, no, you already know. You already know. And if you're st still not sure, sure. I mean, here's a litmus test. If there's something you've been wanting to cut back on or cut out entirely, and you keep thinking about it, but you're not doing anything about it yet, there's something dark there. This is your intuition, your spirit. This is blinking a red light on the dash. And there's a bunch of possibilities, but you know, some of the few uh, common culprits are overindulgence, you know, that extra drink or two, uh, bad nutrition, too much television, Again, gossiping, filled with darkness. Not enough sleep. Oh, we need sleep like it's close to oxygen. And the one that we're all familiar with is, is self-talk. You know, uh, studies show that we have 50 to 60, when, once they started getting neuroplasticity in place, they were able to do studies. And they, they got a pretty good sampling that we have 50 to 60,000 thoughts per day, every, every single day. Most of them are about ourselves. Most of them are repetitive, and unfortunately, most of them are negative. Overall, just remember, you become you, me, we, we become what you consume, what you watch, what you read, your self-talk, who you spend time with, will determine the level of darkness or light in your life. Wow. 50 to 60,000 thoughts. Absolutely. There's a few studies on it out there. That's incredible. So how do, you, how do you turn this around? How do you get back into the light? Uh, uh, yeah, once again, great question. You know, for the most part, uh, it would just be countering, inverting all those things we just talked about. You know, cutting back on those things, limiting or cutting out uh, unhealthy indulgences. Uh, if you're a drinker, spent many years as a nightly drinker, I get it. Just a glass of wine or two, maybe three. You know, unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, that, that habit's, no longer prominent, but man, oh man, cutting back maybe just two or three days or uh, uh, carbs, uh, worse than alcohol for me. <laughs> I'm a carboholic. It's just snacking and sack, uh, snacking. So just cutting back, limiting those things that we talked about, gossiping, so forth, or uh, being conscious of self-talk. Um, you know, the biggie I started with, limits, you know, set limits on news watching and social media scrolling. I, I, once again, we want to be informed. I get that. That makes sense. But literally set, take your phone, set a timer, guys, five, 10 minutes. Now, for some of us who are like, <gasps> 10 minutes, oh, <laughs> it's probably an issue there. But set a timer and say, this is it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to catch up, see what's going on socially in the news, get in and get out before you get sucked into the darkness. Um, back to the self-talk, because it's a big part. I mean, we hear our voice more than any other voice. I mean, encouraging ourselves like we would a close friend or a child. If you had a close friend in a job search, I mean, we all know we would spend way more time, if not almost all of our time, pointing out what they did right, lifting them up, encouraging them. We wouldn't sit there and spend 90% of our time talking about, here's what you did wrong. You should have done this. It's like, we would encourage them. So talk to us like you would a close friend or a child. You know, a seven-year-old that's trying something difficult for them. How would you talk to that child? To start that habit of talking to ourselves like that. You know, how you talk to yourself leads to how you see yourself. And, you know, the old adage, we can't live beyond how we see ourselves. And how you see yourself leads to who shows up in the chair daily for that job search. That will show up, you know, the mindset is a big part is how we talk to ourselves, and that will lead to who shows up for the interview. So you're playing a big part on how your job search goes, 
And actually how you interview depends on how you encourage yourself. Um, stepping in light forgiveness. Oh boy, oh boy. Forgiveness is as dark or hold, uh, withholding forgiveness is as dark as it gets. Um, and I'm not talking about giving permission that it was okay. I'm talking about releasing that person, forgiving them. I used to, when I had my small group downtown, I used to share that when we're holding on to forgiveness, we're not forgiving that person. That's like, we know it doesn't do anything to the other person. It's like making a rat poison smoothie in the morning. And then we sip on it all day. It is poison. It's killing us. Um, letting go of anger, regret, resentment, the thing we wish we had done two years ago or that company that did us wrong. They flat out did us wrong. It was four years ago. We gotta let it go. It is killing us. It's bringing darkness into our future. We have to let go of that so we're not dragging it with us. And getting present, you know, rather than living in the speculation of the future or regret of the past. Um, you know, these are a lot of things to turn on the light. But, um, you know, I gotta be candid, guys. I mean, this focus on self, and I've been reading self help, self talk, working on habits, getting coaching. Uh, for many, many, many years now. And so this focus, this positive focus on self, it, it's helpful. There's no doubt about it, but as helpful as it is, it's only gonna take us so far. You know, even on our best of best days, when we are the best, our positive, best self-talk, we're not getting sucked into the mire. Even on our best of best days, we're limited. We're limited to our humanness and we're still susceptible at any moment to slipping back into the darkness. And for me personally, I gotta tell you, I mean, there is nothing, 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 nothing that keeps darkness at bay like connecting with God. God is the pure antithesis of darkness. I mean, it's the antidote, if you will. He is the light. You know, a few years ago, <laughs> trust me, this took me a, a, quite a while to get there. But a few years ago, I established a habit of starting my day with 30 to 60 minutes of God time before I even think of reaching for the phone or, or turning on anything electronic. I was that person that, you know, for, I came to faith in 04 and God's been a big part of my life and I had daily time, but man, I'd grab a cup of coffee and I'd spend the first half hour, hour just scrolling and Facebook and this and that. And that's how I started my day. I was literally stuck in the mud before I even got going. So I eventually changed that habit to where my first, I don't even, I literally will not even look at my phone. And when I say I don't have anything electronic, that's, I need to adjust that. The Keurig machine, that doesn't count. That's like oxygen, people, okay? I, you, you gotta have the coffee. So I go straight to the Keurig machine, I get that cup, and it's right to the back porch. And I spend five, 10, 15 minutes out there just connecting with God and his presence on just, you know, and then it leads to devotional time. It varies. There's a combo of, you know, you know, coffee in the back porch to uh, reading devotionals, Bible passages, sometimes some journaling. You know, I, I, I can't even express. I, I just, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to be able to put in the words what a game changer this is. Now it's just become a habit. It's not a thing I should do. I'm just toast without it. You know, when I, when I, get, when I connect with God, I get present it gives me calm, I get perspective and all those things that come with, that we talked about when turning on the light. I gotta tell you, it doesn't happen very often any longer, but if I skimp or miss that time, I'm a different person that day. I mean, I just am. You know, ask the people that I've worked with. <laughs> they, they will tell you. You know, my tone is different. Um, my approach, uh, my outlook is much more negative. I'm more controlling. I tend to react rather than pause and respond. I'm, whoo, I'm much more prone to judgment, fear, worry, et cetera. If I skimp or miss on that time, I need that light. And, and with everything, particularly now, 2020, COVID and everything else, you know, with everything uncertain right now, I mean, there's an energy. Even if you don't turn on the news, there's an energy out there that baits us to live beyond the moment, to get out of the present and just run into the future, run into the speculation. Uh, and I think C.S. Lewis, and he just has such an appropriate, timeless quote. He said, there are only two places, only two, two places, two realities in which God exists. He 
It's here in the present moment and in eternity. That's it. That's where God exists. Speculation, you know, worry of the future, regret of the past. These are places where God simply doesn't dwell. It's darkness in those places. So when we're running into the future, what about this? What about that? Ooh, I got to control this or regret of the past. We are literally stepping out of the light and into the darkness. I mean, we know, I mean, worry is a stone cold killer throughout the entire New Testament. Jesus was so clear and adamant about this. I mean, why was he so repetitive? Why did he go over this? Because he knows it's a poison. I mean, it destroys, it erodes the soul, it erodes our union with God. You know, if you want to be, if you want your day to be filled with light, I mean, what better way than to start with the source of light? To start, you start your day with time with God, whatever that might look like for you. Yeah, amen. And so, you know, you, when you finish that time, then, you know, you go to your, maybe you go to your email, uh, you know, and work starts. How do you carry the connection with God into your work day? Whew, that's, yeah, because that can evaporate pretty quickly, right, Greg? Um, uh, great question. You know, the, the first thing is to not go right back to those things that bring about darkness. The list, you know, your own personal list is to not finish that God time. And I talk about, you know, the first 30, 60 minutes, even if it's three or six minutes, however it is, just to start your day um, with that. But to not say, okay, that's done. That's, that's like getting a great workout in. And now I'm going to have a grand slam breakfast, you know, with 2,500 calories and go right back in. It's like, why am I not becoming more fit? So we don't want to go, we don't want to go back to those things that bring the darkness. So that'd be the first obvious one. I mean, you can have the richest, deepest experience with God, but if, if you then just go to watching or reading the news for 20 minutes or so, that connection will be all but gone. I mean, you'll be back in fear and speculation. Remember, God doesn't dwell there. And that's what the news and so many of the, the bogus ads and so forth on social media are all about. It's about worrying and speculation and running into the future and trying to control it. And that will suck us right back into the darkness. Um, there are some proactive things you can do throughout the day. Set a timer on your phone, like once an hour, um, once every few hours or a couple hours, just to pause for 15, 20 seconds. Pause for 15, 20 seconds, say, God, oh, help me. Just take a breath. Meditate for a second. Just take three deep breaths. Um, you know, just to get out of the chaos for a moment. It could be... God help me with this person I'm working with. If you don't help me, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I'm going to say something I regret, whatever it is, just to take a pause. That's, that's one thing we can do. So the habit of doing that 15 seconds um, something that came out early in the year that no pun intended, I believe is a absolute godsend. It's an app. It's a free app. Uh, from Wild at Heart, used to be Ransom Heart Ministries, John Eldridge, Stacey Eldridge, that crew, um, they came up with an app called One Minute Pause. It said uh, pauseapp.com, P-A-U-S-E app, A-P-P.com. It looks like this on your phone. Well, look at that. Look at my reminders for the day, seven minutes ago. It's take a pause. Can you guys see that? I'm not I'm barely... Take yeah, a pause. I see it so it's, it's time pause. for your time for your morning pause. Pause app. Um, what's that? Pause app dot com. Yep. It's this yeah. app. See that little pause thing? Yeah. Pause. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It's an Android and iOS. Guys, oh my gosh, this thing is fantastic. Let me read a description um, from pauseapp.com. A simple way to connect with God in the middle of your busy day. From John Eldridge, the New York Times bestselling author of Wild at Heart and Captivating, based on the One Minute Pause app, uh, One Minute Pause chapter of his new book, Get Your Life Back, which we'll talk about in a second, this app invites you into the simple practice of releasing everything to God, restoring your union with God, and inviting Him to fill you. Oh, guys, I mean, what this does, they have, it's a one, you can pause for one minute, three minutes five minutes or 10 minutes. And the longer you go, it, it expounds, but here's the gist of it. The 
the language is it's connecting with God, but it's like, Lord, help me release, uh, help me release all things. I release all things and all people to you. So things could be that worry or that thing from the past. It's like, I give it to you. I let go of it. I don't want to carry this or that person, that person that, you know, a, a family member or work or that checked in on social media and you're like, I cannot believe they posted that. that. Tell me I'm not the only one that goes through that. Okay. And then they get stuck in your mind. Right. And the turbine begins and it just starts ring, ring. And you just start rehearsing everything you want to say to that person. It is just sucked into the deepest part of the darkness. Trust me, this is an Achilles heel for me. The one minute pause is I release all things and all people. And then uh, if you get into three or five minutes, John will ask, Jesus, who, what do I need to release to you? What do I release? It just gives space for it. It's like, oh, I need to let go of this. Or who do I need to release? I give John to you. I don't want to carry this judgment. I give him to you. I give him and you release it. And then it follows with, Lord, restore, Father, restore my union with you. Saturate me with you. And that's what it is for like a minute, three minutes, five minutes. The 10 minute one has a pause at five minutes, guys, that says, I don't do that one that often. Do you want guidance, worship, or something else? And it'll take you down one of three paths on the 10 minute one. Um, it is unbelievable, guys. And you, you could preset the timers to whenever you want. Um, I was doing it at the top of the hour, but I would have a call or something. So I changed it to 920 and 320. And I don't pause every time. In fact, I pause, I use it way less than half the time. But when I do, it is a break in the day. It is a buh blessing. Um, so that's something uh, th uh, that you can do. It mentioned the Get Your Life Back book. Um, I highly recommend it. This is a book John Eldridge wrote last year and came out in January. Uh, incredible timing <laughs> considering. Here's what it looks like. Get Your Life Back. Everyday Practices for a World Gone, Man, gone Mad. How much foreshadowing was that, right? Um, this is about soul care. This is about taking care of yourself. This is about the compassion for those that are compassionate by nature. We are not meant to have access to all the needs on the planet. We, we get a language they use is compassion fatigue, but this is getting your life back. I mean, this is a fantastic resource that will help. Uh, just a few other things before we wrap up, you know, get to the end here. Um, other things you can do to keep that connection is end the day with a few minutes of quiet connection time with God. Um, I head to the back porch, you know, uh, just for a few minutes, not like the quiet time in the morning, just to connect. And sometimes I talk, sometimes I'll say a prayer. Sometimes I'll just sit there and look at the sky, you know, and, <laughs> but it's just reconnecting. So I'm not bringing this darkness to bed because we all know whatever we bring to bed, that's what keeps us up at night, you know? Um, you know, there are lots of people that have suggested gratitude journals. And now with neuroplasticity, there's actually science that proves that when we are making note of things to be grateful for, it changes <laughs> the formations in our brain. Um, so jotting down, there's always something to be grateful for running water, what have you. Um, and then something from Mel Robbins, who's a pr pretty direct author out there, if you followed any of her stuff. But I, she suggested something months ago. I'm like, that's fantastic. This goes back to the self-talk, guys. She has a journal, and she encourages people to keep a piece of paper, a journal, by, by the net, or on the nightstand, and write down three things. Not, this isn't the gratitude thing. Write down three things you did that day that you're proud of, to build yourself up, to go to sleep, saying, you know what? I was gonna do five minutes of quiet time this morning, I did a minute. 
Great job, Joni. Way to get started. Well done. Boom. Like you would a seven-year-old that's beating themselves up. It's like, I, I, I was so bad. It's like, no, no, Sally, you did great. You walked to, you, got, you showed up for the, you would encourage that person or a friend to do the same things to you. There's three things easily. There's probably 30. Write down three things to build yourself up. Three things you're proud of that you did that today, no matter how small or how big they are. It's a great habit. Um, and just overall, here's what's going on. And this is going, obviously I'm a big John Eldridge fan, have been for 15 years. In a recent Wild at Heart podcast, which I'm a big fan of, comes, not, it's, it's, comes out of Monday mornings, you know, half hour. But in a recent one, he's talking about the current season. He says, you are living, this is the, the quote, you are living in a form of PTSD right now with everything going on. The world is absolutely sideways right now. Your only rescue is your union with God. Your only mission right now is to daily care for and strengthen your union of God. So on a, guys, on a daily practice, I mean, on a daily basis, practice the things that strengthen your union with God. Make it your number one priority so you're strong, so you're strong for the days ahead, so you're strong for your job search to be in the light as much as possible. That's what we got, Craig. That's awesome. Thank you, Ken. That's really awesome. Uh, you know, I've, I've been following you on Facebook for a while. We've been friends uh, for a long time. And I've seen you actually say, you know what, I'm going to get off social media for about three months and I'll, I'll see you in November. Uh, tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I've referenced uh, a couple of times uh, during this talk that my Achilles heel is judgment, you know, which is not coincidentally the very thing I despise about others is when they're judging others. And then I judge them to the same, to the same degree. So it's hypocritical. I'm right in the darkness with them. Um, I, and I found in June that um, I was just filled with darkness, with judgment. And it was easy to say, oh, people were saying this or saying that, and I can't believe they were doing that. Well, that's what led to my judgment, but that's not why I got off. I was just filled with it. I, I, it would be like someone who has a drinking problem. It's like, I can't. I can't just have one. I got, I've got to, I've got to have the booze, you know, and, and get sucked in. So I had to get off. And quite frankly, at this point, I, I was going to get on. Um, I, and I go poke in, poke. So I see my nieces and great nieces and nephews. And I'm like, I can't imagine doing it till after, after the election, not so much because of what other people are doing, but what it does to me. Yeah. I, I am just filled with darkness within yeah. a minute. Yeah. Becky, uh, Terry, you got a question for, for Ken? I do. Thank you so much, Ken, for joining us and just bringing us such a great encouraging message. You mentioned um, scripture and just God's word. And I just wondered if you had any specific scripture that are kind of favorites of yours that encourage you to get back into the light or that might be really beneficial when people are in the job search, preparing themselves to go into an interview, any, any kind of keywords along those lines? Yeah, it's great. You know, I've been a big fan for 15 years of Isaiah 41.13 and Deuteronomy 31.8. I have three passages here for, for the devotional, but I'll save those for now. Isaiah 41.13. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come across as like, I can quote scripture to the cows come home. I know like three passages. I'm going to give you two of the three I know. Um, Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I'm the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. And I wake up in the middle of a nightmare or whatever. I will just repeat that. And I usually don't get past the third time before I fall right back asleep. So it's just a reminder that the Lord is with me. Uh, the God is with me, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. I would literally grab his hand driving down the road. The other one, Deuteronomy 31, 8, the, lo the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you, will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I love that one, particularly for job seekers, because I've chatted with people that are going into a job. And so you combo those two and say, if you're driving to the interview, in this case, if you're going to your laptop, literally hold Papa's hand, hold Jesus' hand, just reminder that he's with you. Just there's so much power and peace in his presence. Then that last one, Deuteronomy 31, the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He goes to the interview, whether it's virtual or in person, before you and sets the stage. He's in the room with you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And you don't even have to do anything. Just acknowledging that he's next to you, that he's within you, that he's in your presence. You're in the presence of God brings an immense peace. I've had people go into the most stressful job searches of their life that have exercised those two things and have come out and said, I've never been so calm in a job search in my life. It's verbatim. That's great. Any, anything else to share, Ken? Yeah, you know, um, the couple of things. Uh, I want to reference something that I heard a long time ago about Martin Luther. Martin Luther, uh, who, you know, from the late 1500s, early 1600s, you know, author of the Reformation, um, he uh, had just a daily habit of spending an hour with God. That was his thing. Uh, and they had a thing at the church when they were a big shindig, a bunch of, bunch of people coming in, dignitaries, so forth, and one of the bishops or what have you, I, I, I don't know, came running in in the middle of that prayer time and said, uh, was given the rundown of all the things that were going wrong. This didn't show up, didn't show up. We're pretty much behind the eight ball. We're, we're toast here and people are gonna be showing up like shortly. I don't think that, that the prayer, that our prayer thing is gonna work today. We need your help. And as soon as Martin Luther got the rundown on it, he said, you know, you're absolutely right. It's gonna take three hours today. You see, we, have it the other way around. We have it, the busier it is, the more that's going on, the more we, even if we have a habit, we it's like, God, please help me, I gotta go. And we're on our own and we're left, we're left our own accord. And to step into inverting it, that the more there is going on, the more stress, the more junk, the more time we need in God's presence, the more time we need in prayer, just whatever that might look like for you. Um, and, you know, with that, I would, there's three passages and I want to close it in, in prayer. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. I guess, Becky, that would go back to a fave right there. It's just come to me. Come to me and do what? No, 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 not do anything. Oh, you mean get my, you know, get, 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 work on the sin, work on the, work on this junk and then come, no, 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 no. Just come to me. All of you are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Just sit at my feet, sit in my presence. Or as I used to share with small group, sometimes it's not doing anything. It's not journaling, it's not praying. Sometimes it's just running and just go jumping in Papa's arms. Let him hold you for 15 minutes. That's it. Just get in his presence. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. This is great, particularly for those of us in Central Texas in the summer. Um, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. Uh, such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I mean, well, I'm out in the hill country. I'm out in Dripping Springs and it's beautiful, but this time it's dry and brown. There ain't no water in sight, man. <laughs> it is dry. But you go to Town Lake, you go on the Town Lake Trail, Lady Bird Lake Trail, you go anywhere there's near water, it's thriving, it's green. We have to stay close to the source of life. Fruit comes from there. Out on our own, we will, it will get withered and dry and brown and, we'll get, and we will falter. And then lastly, it's, it's pretty simple. John 15, five, I am, this is Jesus talking. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's spoken with love from Jesus. He's saying just you know, like to a child, a seven-year-old, it's like, I'm going to run away. It's like, oh, you should be toast out there. You need to stay in our presence and our love. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. We're toast. We need to be in his presence as much as possible. So as I close this in prayer, the first thing I'd like to say is, uh, the segue into it is, you know, if you're not so sure about this God thing, uh, God, Jesus, you're like rolling your eyes or maybe just stone cold think it's a bunch of bunk. Um, I get it. I get it. I understand. Uh, here's something I would encourage just giving a try um, or, or uh, considering. Try spending some time, just two, three minutes a day, two minutes a day with God, whatever that looks like for you. If you've never spoken with God, don't even think he exists. Two, three minutes where you just get in God's presence, just turn, turn the phone off or turn it upside down for the next 21 days and just talk to God. You might say, why did, this, why did I lose this loved one 15 years ago? Why are you letting this happen? I'm mad at this. I don't even think you, whatever it is, just talk, just get in his presence, lament, cry, say, show me, give me an example. Where are you? Give me something, uh, whatever that looks like. Just try it for a few minutes a day for 21 days. And if he doesn't exist, he's not, you have nothing to lose. <laughs> right back where you are today. But what if there is something there? What if there's a light, life, a source of life that you currently that's right there, that's equally accessible to every single one of us that you could be tapping into. Just give it a shot for 21 days. See what happens. With that, I'd like to close it in prayer. Yes. Ah, dear Heavenly Father, Papa, Jesus, Holy Spirit, just thank you for this day. We were not promised. Not everyone got to wake up today, but we did. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for life. In the midst of all this stuff, thank you that we can step outside and breathe clean air on and you know drink clean water just so much to be grateful for we ask your blessing over this a message like this i mean it's going to land differently for everyone that you would discern for them filter for them what if any part of today's talk to pay attention to and it did just give them a, a next right step um, on what to do with it um, a conversation, a blog to check out, this to check out, whatever. Just if you just show them that and just and today, Lord, I'm asking a biggie. You would surprise them. Every single person here, no matter where they're at in their relationship with you or not at all, that you would, you would, I've had goosebumps. You would surprise them today with your presence. Something where they're like, whoa, whoa where it's so obvious, Lord, they would know that you are with them. Please, Papa, just do that for every single person listening. And lastly, as, you know, as everyone here is just you know, blocking out time, being intentional, putting effort into their job search, you would bless them abundantly. Show them where to apply, where to stay away from. Show them what the light looks like. Re Holy Spirit, gently remind them. They're like, whoa, 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 there's darkness there. There's darkness. Remember, remember, remember. And you remind them and gently pull them back toward your light and what that would look like. And then show them where to apply their, their new energy, their new focus, their new creativity, where to apply that in their job search. Put the flashlight on their path, bless their path, and lead them to a job where they're like, no way. Not only did I get a job, I got something beyond my imagination. You would bless them with that. And we lift this up all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ken. Very, Welcome. very encouraging. Yes. Thank you to you guys. Thank you for being vulnerable and, and sharing, uh, you know, your, the, the journey that you've been on and continue to be on. So really appreciate that.